Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, a.k.a. The Lincoln Addict. Going to hit you guys with another video to try to keep these going. It's Saturday morning here in Lutz, just north of Tampa. And I'm going to give you guys a couple of updates. A couple of people have commented on stuff they wanted to see more of. So thanks for doing that. And uh, since I you know, get a lot of awesome comments and whatnot, I figured, hey, let's keep these videos going. So uh, let's jump right in. One of the um, the last videos I did, I talked about doing the Patronics. Knock on wood, that has worked fantastic, okay? I went through like kind of a two-part um, video, a little bit longer, but I tried to give as much detail as possible. And um, I think the last video, I kind of showed my 67, and then I showed a little bit of my 64. But the thing I wanted to hit upon today was someone had asked about bypassing the expansion tank that's right here. So depending on who you talk to, most people will say you don't need the expansion tank right here. And my friend had a 96 or 97 Chevy Dually back in the day. And um, what he did was he basically did this bait, this setup where you, um, you need to have a filler, of course. So you can go to, like I went to Summit and if I remember correctly, a guy, Pat Tian, who we've had on the podcast, Pat's a great guy. Many of you know him. He has a YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the bio. He does very cool stuff. If I remember correctly, I used his part numbers from the Lincoln Forum. And I went to Summit, and basically you just get, all you have to do is you have to get each end that matches, the you know, your size, depending on, you know, um, the inlet and then out from the radiator and then you get the filler which goes in line with it so it's super simple to do um, I haven't had any issues and I've talked to people I talked to people weekly that have worked on Lincoln's for 40 plus years and have been around them even longer probably 45 50 years and they said dude this setup's not gonna give you any problems now the one thing that I think it changes the most is you know the look of the look right when you open it up i mean it's you're used to seeing that big expansion tank and i don't have mine sitting right here but a lot of times there's a there's a brace underneath it that will break um i've just seen different things they'll, they'll have pinholes you have to get them welded up pressure tested i got mine powder coated i had one that had a dent in it um you know i thought i could maybe fill it with air and try to pop the dent out. I mean, it was a, a minor little dent. Um, and I just was like, why am I spending all this time on this? Now, to me, um, you know, I'm not the biggest fan. I know my buddy Tony, you know, when you look at these Lincolns, there's different types of um, these guys that, you know, that, that you can use or that they use at the factory. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of this look, but I always said I was going to kind of go back and and, you know, if I didn't really like it, I was going to change it up however I could. Um, I think they're called tower clamps, but I don't know that I, there's, there's one of the original ones right there. I don't know that I would uh, recommend, you know, something like that on here. I don't know what other options there are, but basically I detailed this engine when it was out and I spent a lot of time and you know, I kind of said, okay, I'm going to drive, enjoy my car. And if this is something I don't visually like, then I'll go back down the road. Um, like another thing you can kind of see here, I, I have these wires, I call them loose wires. I haven't taken the time to go back since I wired the radiator and, um, you know, put uh, tech flex right here. You know, it's split down the middle. I put this on all of the wires on the engine bay, except for those for now. Right. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to wire tie everything. Um, anywhere I didn't put heat shrink yet, I have it on there. I just need to heat shrink that down. Um, I kind of, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to wire tie everything here. I'm going to uh, tech flex anything that needs to be tech flexed. Some of this that I, I pre-added on here, I'm going to go back and um, heat shrink down. And I'm going to clean all this up. It's, it's obviously out of the way. It's not causing any issue right now. Uh, another example of something I need to do is this wire right here, uh, Pat Tian, again, thanks to Pat for all the, the feedback over the years. 
this wire is one that ties into um, the, the power that goes all the way inside the car with the amp gauge and things like that. And the Lincoln Forum, he has a great write-up on this long wire. And basically right now, it could be cut and shortened all this length right here. Um, but when we were finishing the car and we were about to get it running, I just went ahead and tech flexed it and it was out of the way. And typically it's going to sit kind of over here and it's not causing any issue. But uh, the main thing is, you know, you can get as detailed as you want on these cars. Um, when I took this apart, I spent a lot of time just bagging and tagging things just to kind of know. Now, granted, these cars... I mean, older cars are a little easier, right? Because, I mean, you, you have your wires ran here, and, and you kind of know, okay, there's only one place it can go. But if you're going to take it apart, you know, spend the time, do the research, use your notes, apps, things like that, and it'll make your, your life a little bit easier when you're starting to put everything back together. Um, my friend that has a 72 Dart, he's been around Car Stereo a long time, one of my best friends, Paul. Um, he has a 72 Dart, as I mentioned, and he ran just a basic battery disconnect, okay? And I haven't put one on yet. He spins that little knob, turns off his battery on the negative side, and then, you know, he spins it the other way when he wants to drive it. He had never has problems. My car will drain the battery within a couple days, and I love these red tops. I've never had an issue, but if you let them drain too many times, they just do not come back. Okay, so I always take off my negative. That's one thing. So I'm going to spend some time going through and finishing cleaning up all this. And it kind of goes back to what I started with talking about. Uh, there's some guys that are going to want to drive their cars and enjoy them. I decided I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to do the things I want to do. And then cosmetically, if I want to come back and I want to change this or, you know, see what other options, hey, I'll do it down the road. But for me... I spent a ton of time detailing this engine bay only for, I think the power steering pump is still leaking. Okay. That's the only leak that I know of on the car. So we're going to go back through it again. Um, you know, you could spend all this time. You can see I powder coated everything up here. I mean, I love this kind of wrinkle finish. They call it, um, you know, we have double, uh, gaskets here. Uh, this is obviously part of Pat's, um, little write up on, on the parts. Uh, you got this awesome angle coming out of here. You know, you change the, you basically put a water neck on it as, as it's referred to. But, um, you know, valve covers powder coated, air cleaner powder coated. Um, anytime you get this powder coated, I was, would always tell you, use some air to really blow it out because obviously there's going to be little particles of sand if it was sandblasted, things like that in there. But, uh, primarily on this video, I kind of wanted to just show you how easy it would be to take off the expansion tank, put a water neck, get two pieces, right? You have to have this kind of angled piece, and then you have that, and then you get this little filler deal. And that's obviously so that you can fill the coolant as needed. Pretty simple. The fan, 3300 CFM fan, same one Pat Tian used. Uh, this is the Champion Radiator. Uh, this fan install was one of the easiest things I've done, and I always tell people I've been around car stuff a long time, but I am not a fabricator, okay? This bracket came with the fan, and you can see right there I actually used a, uh, I think it was a cutoff wheel or Sawzall that day, and I cut that bracket and I kind of flipped it and drilled two holes right here in the radiator, and this fan has been awesome. Okay, the car does not overheat at all. And then you've got your little temperature deal that comes in. I watched some videos from guys, and one of the things I liked that they did is they mounted this little guy, the controller, right on here. And um, they did a couple cool little things where um, you can kind of see the wire coming out here. How it comes out these little holes that you don't use on the side of this fan. And I tech flexed it all the way through and it kind of just made it nice and tidy. But um, you'd be kind of amazed at how easy some things are to do. Um, I tend to overthink things and I'll think about stuff for two straight weeks and then I'll get out here and do it and then it's not that hard. But um, I, I am a big 
Um, I am big on preparing, so you want to think through things and you want to research and figure out and, and go in the Lincoln Forum. There's tons of threads in there and photos, and, and people have already done a lot of this stuff. Um, shout out to the Raddies. They just got together for Rat Fest 2021. Tony Boss Boland flew out there. Um, in here, I've been enjoying the speaker pods. They sound great. Obviously, I can't really, uh, right now, I can't begin to describe how awesome they sound or display that. But everything has been good with the car. Um, we're going to go back through the steering pump and see if it is, in fact, if the one seal was not seated correctly. Um, that's kind of on the to-do. There's a little bit of leak, and that fan really kicks up some of the oil. Um, this here, again, is not from that leak. That is from, if you've ever looked at these cars, a lot of times this stuff is just caked with oil. And um, those are all going to get changed out. I'll get those through Tony Boss Bolin. He, uh, he gets those. Um, I did pick up recently, and I think I maybe did a short video, at least on social media, the um, covers for the manifolds from Detroit Deviant. I haven't installed those yet and part of the reason is I over the course of time changed to the 67 booster that was redone by booster Dewey and it has the dual master cylinder however when I did all this stuff to get the car going didn't have the foresight to think um okay how am I running these brake lines how will it impact me this line right here is fine. This line over here in the front comes straight down here is in the way of that valve cover or that uh, manifold cover, excuse me, how that's going to go in here. So the plan is instead of, you know, getting frustrated, it's like, okay, well, when I upgrade to disc brakes in the front, we could run that line differently. You know, we could have it come out underneath and over uh, at a nice 90 or something to, to get it out of the way. So those are back there, haven't installed those yet. And this paint, this manifold paint is held up, but I'll tell you, this paint here on the heads, uh, we spent a good amount of time preparing the engine. It's painted all black and everything, but we've used a digital thermometer before and it gets something like 600, 700 degrees right here. So that paint um, is just, you know, it doesn't hold up there. I did run these boots, as I mentioned in the video with the Patronics. I love those things. Um, the last couple things I'll hit on, so this video is not too long. You often see people that will get by a Lincoln and they pop the hood and people will, like John Cashman will comment and say, you've got the wrong fuel pump. The fuel pump that you want to have is a three port. It has a port here where the fuel comes out into the fuel filter and into the carburetor. You have um, the fuel comes in here from the tank. You have your mechanical fuel pump. There's a couple of videos out there where that little rod in there is going up and down. That's what builds the suction. And then you have over here is the return line. So you basically have two right here. You have the smaller one, you have your return. Uh, from here all the way back, I redid, I rebent these lines all the way back. And I think I have a video, if not a video, it's in the Lincoln forum on my build thread, Project Smugglers Blues. Um, that wasn't as hard as you'd think. I made a, a, both lines all the way back. These are new lines, these rubber lines, but you want to have a three-port pump. You have to have that. Uh, you'll hear the word, the V word, vapor lock. I had vapor lock a lot, and I think a lot of it was due to the, the radiator. It was probably heavily clogged. But uh, it builds so much heat in this engine bay, the two ports just don't, the, the, it doesn't, it, it's not enough. Your only option is a three port or if you do some sort of electronic fuel injection type system, which there's plenty on the market. So there's that. And then last but not least, if you're ever going to redo your convertible top, you need to get the new wiring. This wiring used to be about 175. I don't know if it's went up. I think I've seen it anywhere from 175 to 225-ish. Uh, this is a, um, 
a replicated harness that goes through the top, okay? I don't know anyone that would ever change this without redoing the top. Jim Wallace and other people, they make the new uh, canvas or the new material top, and I think it's around $1,000 with a few of the accessories you need. During that installation, you would have a professional or yourself install this wiring, okay? So that's something that if you have a convertible, mine, knock on wood, works really good, but obviously once I redo the top, it would be dumb not to redo this, especially for only a couple hundred dollars. This is one that I got um, that Tony had extra. So I picked this one up off Tony Boss Bowen and uh, I just put it in this bag to kind of protect it a little bit. The biggest issue that I've heard of is you'll go to a quote, a convertible installer, uh, you know, material installer type uh, interior shop and they will sometimes put staples through this. Okay, it's a it's an intricate, I guess, process. And anybody that's done it a few times, I'm sure that they're going, hey, it's easy. But for the average guy or lady that's never done this type of uh, convertible top, I would say, you know, be cautious on who you have do your top. Um, there are some options. I think that's going to continue to grow in the Tampa Bay area for these, um, including our friend TC. I know Jim Wallace comes down here sometimes, and he's kind of uh, trying to retire, from my understanding, a little bit. He doesn't really want to do the installs as much, so uh, more on that. But I'll try to do a video once all of this is uh, ready to go. So, um, talked a little bit about the expansion tank. It is okay to remove them, in my opinion. Other people might feel differently, but I've never had an issue. Highly suggest that you upgrade your radiator. You either flush your existing one or get it record or get a champion like we have here. Consider, depending on where you live, I live in Florida, an electric fan. That's what I did, 3300 CFM. It's in Pat Tian's build thread in the Lincoln Forum. A Pertronics ignition, Pertronics plugs, the boots. I'm gonna do the uh, manifold covers, which again, that's gonna be a future video. A battery, always try to disconnect your battery if you can. Unfortunately, right now, I'm just doing the disconnected each time, and it's partly because I don't get a chance to really drive this car a lot. I didn't mention this. That is a circuit breaker right there, and you push a button. That goes all the way back to the back where my amp is at. So um, I can easily disconnect the amp. That also disconnects the Bluetooth that goes directly into the amp. You can push that button, and you got no power. You can click the little lever and then the power's back. That will also go back to my compressor, so I'll be able to cut off. Got some really high-end wire that I ran back there. All right, so a couple different subjects covered. It's kind of a mess in my shop right now, but um, I look forward to many more videos. I've got some big things in the works. Lincoln Addict, I'm working on a new episode, and uh, all is good. So if you love this content, subscribe, consider subscribing. Leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. It really helps me. About 300 and almost 350 subscribers. Want to definitely grow the channel. Check out my other podcast, our lifestyle podcast, also known as OLP. We have weekly shows there. I'm really regimented. Uh, and then we also have our lifestyle podcast YouTube channel. So I do a lot there. And I'll show you some behind the scenes in a second. Want to give a huge shout out to the Raddies. Tony Boss Bolin brought this one back for me, so I appreciate him. The Raddies. All right, lastly, no, nothing's going to be hurt here on my deck lid. If you've got a Lincoln, you've got space to put stuff, unfortunately. And whether you think I'm crazy or not, I've got a few things back here. Uh, my car, I love that it has this kind of oxidized original um, feel to it. Okay, this obviously looks a lot better. I've never polished this car. There are a few little things that will eventually need to be, you know, remedied if, and I guess really when I get a paint job on it. But uh, on the other channel, I spend a lot of time going through my other passion, which is trucks. Um, street trucks first issue 22 years ago this month, August. Um, I write a monthly column in street trucks which is towards the back, you know, the back, towards the back of a magazine is always the, uh, the good stuff. 
So you can always kind of flip to the back and then you'll see it in there, our lifestyle. Um, yeah, look at that. Mini Truck and Magazine, issue number one, 1988. That's a rare one. But it's a little behind the scenes. I'm working on some display cases that will tie into my Lincoln Passion. Here's a Mini Truck and one. Here's some magazines. What are some of your favorites? These are extras. Some of the skate decks. This is my S10. You may have seen it in one of the videos I've done. Talking about the rear bumper inserts. And of course, I grew up in the 80s. I love BMX. I met Mike Dominguez, who owned that truck. We did a shirt that paid homage to him, and he signed that shirt. Spring Fling, I think that was um, one of the last ones I went to. So yeah, I love Lincolns, but I love other stuff too. Shout out to the Raddies. Thanks for watching. We got you.